morning and thank you very much for coming in person or via live stream to pray together for Helen. I apologize for the delay. We had some problems connecting the camera to the internet, but everything seems to be okay now and we are ready to start the service. Blessed is our God, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed are those who wait for the angels. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord, teaching your commandments. Alleluia. My soul has always longed for your judgments. Alleluia. My soul has grown weary with sorrow. Strengthen me with your words. <clears throat> Alleluia. Incline my heart to your revelations and not to greed. Alleluia. Despair to call of me because of the seers who spur your law. Alleluia. I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your commands. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and always and forever, to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness. We pray. Again we pray for the repose of the soul of God's servant Helen, departing his life, and for the forgiveness of all her sins, whether deliberate or unintended. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord God will establish her soul with the righteous repose, God's mercies, the kingdom of heaven, and the remission of her sins. Let us ask of Christ, our immortal King and God. Grant peace, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servant, Helen, O Christ, our God. And to you we give glory as to your Father who is from everlasting, and your all holy, good, and life giving Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. For I have shivered like a white skin in the frost, yet I have not forgotten your just decrees. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I am your own. Save me, for I have such commandments. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I have not spurned your judgments, for you have instructed me. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Time for the Lord to act, for they have broken your law. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. Have mercy on me, O Lord. And have mercy on me, Alleluia. Look upon me and be gracious to me as to those 
those who love your name. Alleluia. I am young and despised, but have not forgotten your commandments. Alleluia. Hear my voice, O Lord, in your steadfast love. Quicken me in your justice. Alleluia. Princess have pursued me without cause, but my heart stands in love of your words. Alleluia. My soul shall live and praise you, and your law shall be my support. Like a lost sheep, I have grown astray. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commandments. Alleluia. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. The choir of the saints has found the source of life and the gate to paradise. My Lord, so by the way to repentance, I am the sheep that was supposed to save your call me back and save me. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. In the beginning you formed me out of nothing, honoring me with your divine image. But when I disobeyed your commands, you returned me to the earth from which I was taken. Restore me to that likeness that the ancient beauty may be formed anew. And when he does sit here, he had a great song, and that the Jehovah does so, he called me, he said in the dog, he said, he can stick with the fear of the Jehovah, he cleared his song, or so was my despot, he can call his song, he has to be in here, che ti potini patrida parascumi para di su pari più politi in me. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. Give rest, O God, to your departed servant, and assign for a place in paradise where the ranks of the saints and the righteous, O Lord, will shine forth as lights. To your servant now asleep, will you grant rest, overlooking all her offenses. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let the devout in praise the one God can astray the Trinity, sing him. Holy are you, everlasting Father, for eternal Son and Holy Spirit, illumine us as we worship you in faith and deliver us from the eternal fire. Now and forever, and to the ages of ages, Amen. Hail, Majestic Lady, who for universal salvation gave birth to God in the flesh. Through you, humankind has found redemption. Through you, may we find paradise, pure and blessed Theotokos. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 
When morning makes and change on earth, all things are flimsier than shadows, more deceptive than dreams. In but an instant, death displaces everything. But in the light of the countenance of Christ, in the sweetness of your beauty, he breasts to her whom you have chosen for your love mankind. Every mortal is like a flower that withers, a passing dream that vanishes. Yet when the trumpet sounds, all the dead will rise up as in an earthquake to meet you, Christ our God. Will you then, Master, assign a place where you will say it's a life for the soul of her whom you have summoned from the midst of us? All human pursuits are vain. They have no being after death. Wealth does not remain. Glory does not accompany along the way. Once death befalls, all this vanish utterly. So let us cry to the immortal Christ. Give rest to her who has left our company in the only place of all who rejoice. Truly also is the mystery of death how the soul's harmony of the body is violently broken, how the natural bond that unites them is severed by the divine will. Therefore, we entreat you, giver of life and lover of mankind, to her my departed, grant rest for the righteous dwell.
concerning us. How are we given over to decay? How are we paired with death? Surely, as it is written, by the commandant of God, who gives rest to the departed. Blessed ever be thy way, thy way for which you walk this day. For there is prepared for you a place of everlasting grace. <laughs> Let us be attentive. Here is from the first part of the holy apostle Paul to the Thessalonians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant concerning those who are asleep, that you may not bring as some as you who have no hope. For since you believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we also are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, we shall not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, who is sent from heaven, with a cry to command, with archangels call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Peace be to you, Rita. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom Father, 
Today, on January 7th, the day after we celebrated the baptism of the Lord in the Jordan River, is dedicated to St. John the Baptist, the one, who, the one whom, when the Lord approached him to be baptized by him, with fear, told him, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? With that holy fear, John the Baptist realized that he was in the presence of the Messiah. He was in the presence of the Son of God, and he knew he was not worthy even to untie his sandals. But the Lord tells him, permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then he allowed him. And then, with in humility, with fear, hope, and love, John the Baptist baptized the Lord, immersed the Lord in the waters of the Jordan. Why am I telling you about this today in the context of Helen's funeral? Because uh, I'll never forget the day when uh, I went to visit Helen at the nursing home and to bless her room after the Ophony, to bless her room and herself with holy water. It was in February of 2020, just before the COVID pandemic started. Of course, she was in the memory unit at the nursing home. Everybody knew that she was struggling with Alzheimer's. She didn't know who I was because I was a new priest for her. But when she saw me dressed in my priestly vestments, and especially when I put the epitrachelion around my neck, she stood up and she started to cross herself and she said, Papas! She was speaking Greek, I was speaking English. But we were understanding each other. And when I said, Blessed is our God, always, now and forever, and to the ages of ages, she said, Amen. And she was trying to sing along with me, and she was crossing herself, because she knew that I came to bring the presence of God to her. And with that fear that John the Baptist had in the presence of the Lord, Helen was having the same kind of holy fear, because she knew that she was in the service of the Lord, and they was trying to bring, to bring the presence of the Lord to her. She was so gentle, so humble. She had that holy fear of the Lord, which is so misunderstood by our modern society, because you know, some people say, I'm not afraid of the Lord. I tell those people, you should be afraid of the Lord. Because he's an almighty God and you have no idea who he is. I have no idea who he is. He was beyond anything we could imagine. He is the one who is behind everything that there is. So we better have that holy fear. 
of him, which is the beginning of wisdom, which is the beginning of gentleness, the beginning of humanity, the beginning of realizing that I am a human being and I need God to be my savior. This is what I found in Helen that day when I went to bless her and her room and she blessed me with a beautiful attitude of a Christian who knows to fear the Lord but not to stay away from Him. A Christian who had that holy fear that brings us closer to God as we say in the Holy Liturgy when we invite when the priest invites the people to come to partake of the body and the blood of the Lord. The priest says, approach with fear of God, with faith and with love. The first one is fear of God. But then with faith we approach and with love because we know that God is love. He's the consuming fire of love. And if we have love in our hearts, our love will be connected with the consuming fire of the love of God and we will become one with Him. I felt that day how Helen, even if her mind was not very good anymore, but her spirit was there. This is why we firmly believe in the Orthodox Church that the best way to know God is not through the mind, but through the heart, through the spirit. Even if her mind was not there anymore, her spirit was so alive. She knew God in her spirit. This is what we are called to. And this is what I firmly believe that we could learn from Helen's life, which was given to her by God, that sparkle of fire of love was given to her by God on the day of September 17, 1928, when she came into this world in Kefalari, Castoria, Greece. And Helen transformed her childhood fascination with dressmaking into a, into a vocation as a, professional, uh, as a professional seamstress during her early 20s. In 1953, Helen married the love of her life, Cosmas Kiru. And in 1961, the young couple, along with their children, their daughter, Frederiki, and their son, Alexandros, immigrated to the United States, and they settled in Fort Wayne. While working first at the old Venerable Tea and Tea Tailoring Company on Oxford Street, and later at Bennett and Sons Clothing Manufacturing in New Haven, Helen successfully applied her old work craft to her new work setting, building countless friendships across a career that spent more than 30 years of experience as a clothier. Nevertheless, it was family, faith, and community that anchored Helen's life. She was a, ded a dedicated parishioner for six years of our church. She was very active as a member of our Philotoko Society and of the Daughters of Penelope. But above all, she was devoted to and found her, her greatest joy in the embrace of her loving family who cherished her for her humility, gentle nature, selflessness, warmth, incomparable mastery of homemade tiropita, an unbridled love that could lift up any spirit and an infinite capacity for love and giving that defined for her children and grandchildren the words mother and grandmother. Helen is survived and greatly missed by her son, Alexandro Skiru, with his wife, Elizabeth, of Bedford, Massachusetts. Because 
Elizabeth is recovering from a hip replacement surgery, and Alex has his own health struggles, and because of the COVID-19 pandemic, they could not be here in person today, but they are watching us and crying with us. She's also missed by her daughter, Frederiki Tongaridis of Castoria, Greece, who, of course, again, because of the distance this time, could not be here in person today, but who's watching the service with us and crying with us. She will be greatly missed by her, by her granddaughter, Sophia Kiru of Bedford, Massachusetts, by her granddaughters, Eleni Tongaridis and Sophia Moratidis of Castoria, Greece, as well as great-grandchildren, great Frederiki and Georgia Mortaridis, Moratidis. She is also survived by her nieces, Nikki Kiru of Warwick, Rhode Island, Sandra Connor and her husband, Casey, of Klamath River, California, and Dorothy Lehman of Fort Wayne, as well as Irene Rigas and her husband, Neofitos of Fort Wayne, and Dina Kozinas, also of Fort Wayne. She's also survived by her nieces, by her, by her nieces, many children, and other family members and friends in America, Greece, Australia, Argentina, and Italy. Helen was predeceased by her beloved husband of 57 years, Osmas, by her infant son, George, parents, Christos and Calliope, and sisters, Olympia, Vasiliki, and Dimitrula, by her son-in-law, Petros Tongaridis, and brother-in-law and sister-in-law, George and Helen Kiru, respectively. She will be greatly missed by all of us who were blessed to know Helen. Since her passing away, I've been told by quite a few people what a humble and gentle person Helen was. How she never gossiped. How she was always having a smile and a good word for everyone. And uh, I would end my sermon today about Helen with a few words from St. Peter's first letter, who says, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. We are asking the Lord today to give grace to his humble servant, Helen, and to receive her into his kingdom of humility, where God dwells with all the saints and all those who are rejoicing with him in heaven. Amen. And glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great goodness, we pray you hear us, and have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again we pray for the repose of the soul of God's servant, Helen, departed his life and for the forgiveness of all, of all her sins, whether deliberate or unintended. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord God will establish her soul where the righteous repose. God's mercy is the kingdom of heaven, and the remission of her sins. Let us ask of Christ, our, our immortal King and God. Grant this, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. 
God of spirits and of all humankind, as you trample down death, overthrowing the evil one and granting life to your world, will you, Lord, grant rest your servant Helen, now asleep in death, in a place of light, a place of renewed life, a joyous place, shunned alike by pain, sorrow, and sighing. Every sin she may have committed in word, or deed, or thought, as our good and loving God forgive, for no one can live and not sin. You alone are without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your word is truth. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servant, Helen, O Christ our God. And to you we give glory, as to your Father who is from everlasting, and your all-holy to the life-giving Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and all us and forever, and ever, amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Father, give the blessing. Glory to you, O God, our hope. Glory to you. May he who is sovereign of the living and the dead, who as immortal king rose from the dead, Christ our true God, through the prayers of his all pure and holy mother, of the holy, glorious, and praiseworthy apostles, of our holy and God-bearing fathers, of the holy and glorious forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of his beloved friend Lazarus, the holy and just, who lay four days in the tomb, and of all the saints. Assign the soul of his servant Helen departed from us, for the righteous dwell, granting it rest in the bosom of Abraham, and numbering her among the just. And may he have mercy on us, for he is good and the lover of mankind. Amen. May your memory be eternal, our sister worthy.
sprinkle me with hyssop and I shall be pure. Cleanse me and I shall be whiter than snow. Please. 